Hey kids, look what I got. One of those $50 power supplies from eBay. Is it going to be a piece of crap or is it going to be the best buy on the internet? Let's crack into this thing and find out. Stand by. Well, I got this thing over on the workbench. I'll take a look at what comes with it. It comes with a really poorly written manual. That's, you can't hardly make heads or tails out of what they're saying in this thing. It's really bad English. And it also comes with a pair of these uh, really cheap test probes, or well, actually alligator clamp probes. They're really th thin. You probably can't see that here. But you try and squeeze them and they just, they flip over, they just flop over in your fingers and you try and squeeze them. So I got a pair that I made. These are nice and wide. I'll use those to do the test with. And the specs on this are, it goes from 0 to 30 volts DC and 0 to 5 amps. I am having my doubts that it will handle 5 amps, but we'll see. And one of the first things I noticed, and you probably can't notice it on camera, but this thing has got fingerprints behind this glass in front of it. It's an LED display. That's not too bad, but it just shows that it's really a poor construction when you've got fingerprints left over after you assemble something. Well, you can see it's set for 5 volts. It's got a fine and a coarse adjustment. These are not multi-turn pots. These are single-turn pots. Now you adjust the amperages and the, or I should say how you adjust the amp, amp limit for the constant current source is you just short out the outputs and you make your adjustments like that. I'm going to adjust this one to 100 milliamps and you can see when you take the short off it goes back into constant voltage mode and it keeps it at 5 volts. I've got my meter hooked up and it's a little off. It's 5.15 volts and 5 volts on the power supply screen. I think I'm going to trust my fluke meter over this. So I'm going to turn it down until I see 5 volts on multimeter, which is right there. Not sure if this has an adjustment inside the power supply or not. I'll we'll crack this thing open and take a look, but right now I think I'll just uh, hook up a load to it and see if I can regulate the load. I'm going to be using this resistor resistance decade box as my load. I'm going to go ahead and choose a 50 ohm resistor because I'm going to stick to 5 volts. That should give me a half a watt load. This uh, substitution box is only good for 1 watt. So that'll I don't want to burn out my box, so I'll have to get a external single resistor and test the 5 amp section of this thing. All right, I've enlisted the aid of my Agilent meter here to read amps. And we're going to measure volts on the Fluke. I'm going to see how accurate this power supplies LCD or LED readout is. So I'm just going to hit 50 ohms on the decade box. And it's actually pretty accurate for volts. That's 5 volts. The voltmeter is reading 5 volts. However, the current out readout on the power supply is 70 milliamps, milli, yeah, milliamps. And the Agilent is reading 99.7 milliamps. I would have a tendency of trusting a $350 meter over a $50 power supply. Well, I readjusted the power supply a little lower down to 50 and we'll see what happens. And the voltage is dropping 
although the amperage is at 80 milliamps. So obviously this thing is off, which I already know it is. So we'll turn it down until we see the amps on the meter drop to 70 milliamps. And there it is. That gives us three and a half volts. It's exactly what it should be doing. Hopefully I can adjust that. I'll know when I get the cover off whether it's adjustable or not. Well, it's time to take the top off to see if there's any adjustment for our voltage and current displays. Alright, I got the top off and it does look like there's some adjustment pots in here. There's two here on the current display and two on the voltage display. I guess the only thing to do is to crank it up and see what it does. Well, it looks like the first pot I tried is the right one. It's got 5.9 on there now. I'm going to go ahead and turn this thing down until the voltmeter reads 5 volts. And then I'll adjust the pot here. So it reads 5 volts, of course. There we go. Now for the current. I've got my load hooked up and my amp meter hooked back up. We just have to adjust the pot in the back and see if we can get this thing to match what the meter says. And we'll turn this up. There's nine. That might be all the better we get at point oh nine. All right, I'm going to go ahead and throw a little more current at this thing, or a little more of a load at this thing, so we can get a double digit. There it is. Turn this thing down to 1.5. And there that is. Well, I think that's about as good as it's going to get. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is a higher load test. I'm going to try and get this thing pegged out at 5 amps. Style thermal couples that I'm going to go ahead and put on to the uh, heat sink. I've got a thermal couple reader. I've got some tape to hold the thermal couples on. All I have to do is attach them. I've got my tape on the heat sink. And you got to use tape when you've got a thermal couple like this. I've just stripped the ends off and spot welded the end of it. Uh, if you put that on the aluminum heat sink, it's going to be a conductive surface and it's going to short out that thermal couple and you're not going to get an uh, accurate reading out of it. Uh, I'm just using duct tape. It's not the best. There's actually a tape made by Scotch or 3M, I'm not sure, or maybe even both of them. It is specifically made for thermal couples. It's a high temperature tape, but since we're not really launching a satellite, we're just uh, measuring a power supply, we don't need to get so anal about the accuracy. And what we got here is a high limit. It's, uh, well, I suppose it'll work, but it doesn't look too uh, healthy to me. And we've got the two drivers down behind it. And uh, you can see the heat sink is nothing more than a plate of aluminum. Not exactly what I would call a high quality uh, heat sink. But we'll put the thermocouples on there and we'll see how hot this thing gets when I put it under a larger load. I put one here on this side, I've got another one on the other side. One thing you're going to want to do is to make sure that it's not shorted to your heat sink. So I usually just use an ohmmeter across here and then put the other end on the heat sink. And there it is. It's open. No shorts. Next step here, I've got my 4 ohm load. Those are 8 ohm 50 watt resistors. Got my heat sink, put the resistors on. But first, I gotta put on some uh, 
heat sink paste on the resistors just a little uh, just a little bit to make sure we can get enough heat transfer between the heat sink and the resistor and there's just a little bit of heat sink compound I'll just smear it across here that's probably even a little too much I'll make it work I gotta sandwich the heat sinks between the two we'll be ready to go well I got my makeshift uh, heat sink I decided not to drill holes or anything I'm just gonna use some clamps here to hold the heat sinks on hook up the power supply to these wires there may have to put some tape on there in case they short but we'll see how it goes now I just have to set up the power supply got the power supply down to a low voltage so it doesn't spark when I short these ends either set the current up crank her all the way up all right now I just gotta adjust my voltage up keep an eye on my meters and that has stopped climbing and I'm at 4 amps instead of 5 so there we go 20 volts still only 4 well 4.9 on the meter so close enough I gotta hook up my thermal couple so we can get moving here all right yeah, it's starting to get warm already the amperage, actual amperage dropped to 4.8 the voltage is at 19.5 so meters are especially the amp meters off by a mile I will admit the fan kicked in so whatever they're using to, to uh, adjust the temperature is working got one thermal couple here T1 which is your left side is 130 degrees T2 is 119. I guess we'll just let her buck, see what happens. Well, so far it's holding at 19.6 volts and 4.8 amps. It didn't burn up immediately, so left side of the heat sink is at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. You and that. Uh, Heat sink with the resistors on there is getting pretty toasty. I put a chunk of cardboard between my anti-static mat and the heat sink so I don't burn a melt a hole through the uh, anti-static mat. Back again and the power supply seems to be holding at 19.6-19.7 volts. The current is 4.9 amps. This has been running now for 10 minutes and I think I'm going to just chicken out here and pull the plug because the cardboard I got under the heat sink is I can start to smell it burning. Well I decided to let it go a little more. Went down to 12 volts at 3 amps. The uh, heat sink temperature is dropping, dropped 10 degrees. So we'll just let it run here for a while, see what happens. They've let it run for a while. I kept turning it down, letting it run, turning it down, letting it run down to one amp, which is about 4.23 volts on the voltmeter, which is correct. I've got a four ohm load, so I gotta admit it tracks pretty good. You turn the amperage down, the voltage follows just like it's supposed to do. Bad part of it is is the meters on the built-in meters are pretty much useless they're off by a mile I'm gonna disconnect everything here and get back with my final thoughts on this thing well like I said before the meters up front are pretty much useless if you get something like this you're gonna to have to use a meter for both voltage and current you can adjust the voltmeter here if you get it, say you're at 5 volts, I got it so it's pretty much on, or maybe a tenth of a volt off around the 5 volt range. I go up to 10 volts, it gets about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 volts off. You go above that, it's it's over a volt off. 
And when you get into the 20 volt range, it's like a volt and a half or two volts off. It's pretty much useless. And then when you try and adjust it for the upper voltages, then it's off on the lower voltages. The current I could not get to go at all. I mean, I just could. There was really no adjusting it where it would adjust to a good spot. So you're going to need you're going to need meters hooked up to it. I got to admit, it did it did do the job. I mean, it, it's not something you would use for a production department. I mean, it's I wouldn't hook that. I wouldn't leave it at five amps for an entire day. That thing would. I mean, the heat sink was taking away the heat, but it was getting awfully hot in there. If I would have left this thing go for a longer period of the time, I'm sure I could have overheated that heat sink. A little piece of aluminum I've got in there. I unfortunately don't have the proper load. A little 4 ohm load would work for a while, but there's not a big enough chunk of aluminum. You could have a water-cooled load if you're going to do a long-term current test like this, but for a hobbyist, it works. It's not great. I don't know that I would recommend buying it, but if you're broke, you got nothing else. Well, actually, I would save my money and buy something a little bit better. I'm going to call this one tested, and I'll see you next time.